favorite product in every category. Ugh, the anxiety that this video causes me. You guys have requested this video so many times and you're talking to the girl that has over 200 eyeshadow palettes. I know you're making me choose between my babies, but it had to be done. It had to be done, friends, for this video. We're gonna be getting ready together today and I'm gonna be using my favorite product in every category, at least at the time I'm filming this video. So if you wanna hang out with me and hear about all of my faves, then keep watching. Okay, party people, let's get into this video because I gotta get ready for work today. I am excited to do this. As I mentioned, a lot of you guys have requested this video. And friends, I will just say for these favorites, I really, I just followed my heart. Whatever I am really, really loving in the moment, my favorite product in every category, that is what I'm gonna be applying to my face today. Of course I have more favorites. Of course I have more holy grails. And so guys, make sure you are subscribed to my channel because in the new year, I'm gonna be doing a lot more top five foundations, top 10 eyeshadow palettes, covering my favorites in every single category. So make sure you are subscribed for that and also leave me a comment down below letting me know which of those categories you want me to focus on first. But for now, we're gonna be doing favorite product in every single category, and we are gonna be starting off with primer. I am not really a primer girl necessarily. Like, I usually just forget about it. I usually just go in with a really good quality foundation. But when I do go in with a primer, it's usually something that adds hydration and a little bit of glow and kind of blurring to any imperfections that I have on my skin. Right now, I'm kind of like breaking out, so I feel like I need this. And my favorite primer to go in with has definitely been the RMS Super Natural Radiant Serum. This was sent to me from RMS, but I loved it so much that I actually purchased it in another shade and I like to mix them. I like to wear this on its own, on like a no makeup day. I layer it under my foundation just like I do today. Honestly, I just love it. I really like those types of glowy primers, but this one is extra good because like I said, it adds a little bit of moisture and it also is SPF 30. If you're gonna use it as a sun screen, you do need to put the recommended amount. So I'll just say that. I know a lot of people out there, they're into skincare like me, and they're probably nodding their heads right now. If you are using this as a sunscreen, you're probably going to use this up really, really quickly. So I usually put on a sunscreen, I slather it on, and then I kind of put this on for extra protection. Or if you're just inside all day and it's the winter and you really don't see that much light, this might be enough, just like a nice little layer. I love to also mix this into my foundation. If you want to add a little bit more glow or hydration to something that is extra matte, you can really use this to customize other products in your makeup collection so you don't have to go out and buy another shade or another formula or something like that. I'll use the medium aura shade. This is called light aura, by the way. This is the lightest shade, but I'll use the medium one to add a little bit more like darkness and glow to my foundations, especially in the summer if I'm just a little bit tanner than I normally am. It's a good way to customize my foundation. So there you go, guys. There is that beautiful glow. And thank you so much to all of you who comment on my videos telling me, oh, I seen you use this. I bought it and I really like it. I've had so many people comment telling me that they bought this because I loved it and you guys really love it too. So that makes me so happy. Next up, we have foundation and foundation was tough. Foundation is tough because like I know my top five pretty well, but picking just one is so difficult because I'll use different formulations for different types of aesthetics and days and occasions and all of that. So this was really hard, but I, I did pick one. I did pick one, friends, and it is the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation. This is such a good everyday perfecting foundation. It is so creamy and moisturizing. It wears really well. It has glow to it. It really just works for any single type of makeup look and that's why I decided to pick this one out. You guys have heard me rave about a lot of other foundations here on my channel and I don't want to diminish the love that I have for those foundations but I really think if this fits within your budget because I know it's quite expensive I really think if it fits within your budget this is worth trying. It's great for mature skin. This is my mom's favorite foundation. It's great for dry skin, normal skin. If you have oilier skin you might want to go with something a little bit more matte but this isn't a dewy foundation where you're going to look like a grease ball. So honestly, I feel like it could work for those of you who have slightly oilier skin as well. Check out that coverage. Look how quick this is. That's also why I love this. You put one pretty light coat. You can still see a lot of my redness on this cheek and on this 
cheek that has the foundation. It's just instantly, instantly perfected. I also end up using this one a lot more because it's just more travel friendly. It comes in this little squeezy tube, which I know guys, it's not super luxurious. And maybe for the money, maybe you would expect something, you know, like the glass bottle for the fluid version of this foundation. But I really like this squeezy tube. It's so easy. And you know, if I have it in my bathroom or something, I'm not afraid if I drop it on the floor or something like that. So yeah. I did manage to choose a favorite and I do think that this is probably, it's definitely my most used foundation this year. So that also kind of played a part when choosing which one I wanted to feature in this video. By the way, if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I love luxury beauty. I upload new videos just like this one every single week. I do a lot of new makeup reviews and I also do fun and helpful guides. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fan because we would love to have you. And as a reminder, friends, most of you know this, but I always link all the products that I use in every single video in the description box down below. I do use affiliate links. So if you like my videos, if you like my channel and you want to support my channel, shopping through my links is a really great way to do so. And with that, friends, let's get on to the rest of these favorites. I feel like I'm going to say this for every single category, guys. So please forgive me. But concealer was also difficult for the same reasons as foundation. Sometimes I want something that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more, you know, no makeup, makeup type of look. Sometimes I want something glowy, more matte, more full coverage, just depending on the aesthetic that I'm going for. So it was really difficult to pick just one, but there has been one that I am just completely obsessed with right now. I rekindled my love for this when I purchased the reformulated version this year. It is the Dior Forever Concealer. This is such a good every day. And I know I've said this a couple of times in my past few videos, but in case you missed it, this is the concealer that I always recommend to friends and family when they're like, oh, what's a really good concealer? Concealer. You know, I want something a little bit nicer, a little bit more luxury. Maybe they are using it for a special event. Maybe they're using it for every day. It really doesn't matter. This is such a beautiful concealer. I like the fact that it's not too serum-y, but it also doesn't dry out my skin. I like the fact that it has a little bit of glow, but it's not so shimmery and reflective that I can't put it on a breakout because I do get those. I like to be able to put my concealer also on my nose or on my forehead because that's usually where I get my breakouts. It is just a fantastic concealer. Like, doesn't like this one? Comment down below if you don't like this. I need to know because it has been such a long-standing favorite for me and it has been in my everyday makeup bag for a couple of weeks now as I've been using it and I just remembered how much I used to like it when I had it. So this has been a favorite for a really, really long time. And I promise, guys, I'm not going to repeat everything that was in my everyday makeup routine video. I do have some other things in this video that I'm going to be showing you, but this is my favorite concealer. I am going to apply a little bit of powder and my favorite powder is definitely the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light. I actually have this shade right here in this palette. This is the Sculpture Palette. It might be sold out right now on the Hourglass website. I'll link it down below in case it comes back in stock, but a lot of their ambient lighting palettes have the Dim Light shade. It's kind of a classic for them and I love it. I even have like a little mini version of it right here actually. I'll show you guys. I keep this this in my little brush kit right here next to my filming area. And this is just here in case I need it, in case I need a little bit of powder to set my face, in case I need something to kind of blend out my eyeshadow looks, all that kind of stuff. It's such a good powder to work with. And sometimes I'll blend it, you know, with the other one that is in the palette right here. But as you guys know, I really love glowy products. I love things that work a little bit harder for me, that kind of blur the face, where I don't have to really use that much because less is more. I don't want my makeup getting cakey on my face, especially because I have dry skin. It is prone to doing that. And I've been using this powder for years now, since they came out with that first holiday palette years ago. Hopefully you guys remember it had like the single powder right here and it probably was dim light. And I was so skeptical of this palette. I was so confused about these powders because they were shimmery. And I remember going into Sephora and they had representatives from Hourglass. Like they had Hourglass 
hourglass makeup artist at Sephora and they coaxed me into their little chair and they put that first holiday palette on my face. And I remember looking in into the little mirror after they had finished my makeup and thinking, oh my gosh, my skin looks airbrushed. And I remember going shopping in the mall after that and I couldn't stop looking at my skin when I was in dressing rooms and that kind of stuff. And ever since then, I've just been absolutely hooked on the hourglass powders. I used to put them all over my face just like this. Now I kind of mix it up. You know, there's other brands that I like to dabble into, but I still feel like this is my OG blurring powder that really got me hooked on that kind of like perfected airbrush aesthetic. Next up friends, we have bronzer. And even though there were so many good powder bronzer releases this year, I decided to go with an OG favorite. This is the one that I feel like I've still used the most this year. It is the Tom Ford Soleil Bronzer in the shade Terra. This is just, this is the perfect shade for me. It's not too light, it's not too dark, it's not too peach, it's not too golden. It is kind of like your perfect neutral bronzer. It is a very, I don't wanna say universal shade because it doesn't work for everybody. It's actually the only thing that I don't like about this bronzer is that they need to launch more shades. There's only two in the line. So I wish that Tom Ford or the Estee Lauder brands, whomever owns Tom Ford at this point, I wish that they would modernize this line a little bit. I feel like it would do very, very well. So that's my only gripe about this, but at least for me and my skin tone and just kind of my favorites that are in my makeup drawer, I definitely feel like this one is at the top. And I've been using this one as kind of the baseline for a lot of my bronzer reviews, or at least with my swatches, because like I said, this is the one that's kind of the most neutral in my collection. And I don't mind something that's a little bit, you know, warmer or peachier or lighter or anything like that. I still enjoy all of my bronzers, but I really feel like the color and the finish of this is really that perfect in between that I look for when I'm thinking about my favorite out of all of the bronzers. While I'm not going to be applying this, I did want to include my favorite cream bronzer and it is the NARS Laguna Bronzing Cream. I love that there are so many shades to choose from in this. So depending on your preferences, they're probably going to have a shade for you. I like the texture of this. It's creamy. It's long wearing. It blends really easily. It smells amazing. This is my favorite cream bronzer. It's so, so good. I think I, I think this was number one in my cream bronzer ranking, if I'm not mistaken. I also really, really like the powder version of this as well, the talc-free one that they came out with this year. So if the Tom Ford shade doesn't work for you, I highly recommend checking out the talc-free ones from NARS. For contour, there's really no question here. It is the Westman Atelier Face Tray Stick in the shade Biscuit. I've talked about this so much on my channel because I use it in every Get Ready With Me that I won't talk about it too much, but in case you're new, in case you are looking for a beautiful contour, this one is worth every single penny. The color is just perfection. It's a little bit more cool toned than the bronzer so it gives me more of that chisel but if you wanted to use it a little bit more liberally all over the face as kind of like that bronzer style of product where you're really focusing on just like chiseling and shaping the face you can do that as well it's super quick it's super compact i love the packaging formula is beautiful so I guess <laughs> if you're not new here, you aren't surprised by this favorite. Next up, we have blush. And I did pick both a powder and a cream formulation because I want to show some love to my cream products as well. Although I'm going to use the powder one for this video. And the blush that I chose, surprise, surprise, is the RMS Redimension Hydro Powder Blush in the shade Maiden's Blush. It's very similar to the Gucci Rosy Beige. I like that one too. It was a little hard for me to decide between them, but this year I have been using this this one more. And right now I'm just kind of going for more of that glowy vibe. And this one is also a little bit more affordable. I'll put my coupon code down below if you guys want to save a little bit of money on the RMS site. You guys know I love these blushes. I've reviewed every single shade for you. I have guides on every single shade and they're just beautiful. They give you that nice little glow. You don't have to use a highlighter if you don't want to. As you can see here, I went in with a pretty dense brush. They're pretty pigmented so you can build them up if you want on something a little bit lighter. Crystal Slipper is the more subtle version of this, but I picked this one as my favorite because I feel like this shade, it just gives me a little bit, it's like a little bit more warmth. I feel like it works really well for my coloring. I have warm brown eyes and you guys can see right here, my roots are growing in. I have warm medium brown hair. And so I feel like this tone just really, really suits my coloring and it gives me a very beautiful natural flush. This goes with every 
single eye look that I create, or at least most of them, unless I'm doing something super cool toned. So that is what I picked for my favorite powder blush. I know, so difficult because I love blush so much. And then for my favorite liquid blush, I know in my blush ranking, I told you guys that I really, really like the Glossier Cloud Paints, and I do like those, but I've just been having a little bit more fun with the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. And I think the reason is because I just really like the colors. She has some really beautiful bright colors. She has the dewy formula and the matte formula. So I kind of have just been having a little bit more fun this year. Still love the cloud paints, still love that. But my favorite right now are the Rare Beauty ones. And this is my favorite shade, which is called Grateful. This is in the dewy formulation. And I didn't use this one in this video because I actually recently posted a holiday get ready with me tutorial. I did two tutorials in that video. You guys really liked it. And I used this beautiful blush in that tutorial. It looks super clownish on my hand as I swatch it. But trust me, if you're curious, check out that video because I promise this is the most gorgeous, beautiful, romantic flush of red on the cheeks. You can sheer it out. You really just need a tiny little bit. It's so gorgeous and romantic. And I love to pair it with new neutral makeup and that's kind of like the pop or like I did in that tutorial I pair it with a red lip and a very simple frosty eye. Some of you might be a little bit annoyed with my favorite highlighter choice, but I'm sorry, I had to go with the Chanel Camellia Highlighter, the Rev, Rev de Camellia Highlighter. This was so sought after, it was popular for a reason because it is an absolutely stunning, smooth, delicious highlighter, and it has the most beautiful design as well. Obviously it's fading away, but I don't really care. I still love this gorgeous highlighter. As you can see, it is like the perfect tone for my skin. I love it. I'm sorry it was limited edition. I'm sorry it sold out so quickly and Chanel has not brought it back. They really need to just make this permanent, even without the embossing. I feel like this would be such a popular product in their line. It's just so, so good. I have a lot of other highlighters that I love, but that one to me is just very special. That is not the highlighter that I'm going to be using today though. I want to use my favorite cream slash liquid highlighter and it is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light one. This is the shade that I've used the most. It is my favorite and it is the peach gasm shade. And as you can see, I don't even want to, I don't even want to show you the tip of this product because it's a little, it's a little bit suspicious, but I promise you it's fine. It's just that it gets super duper messy. And this can double as both a blush and a highlighter. I usually say to you guys that I feel like the RMS blushes are the powder version of this product. And I think this might be the first time that I'm actually combining them. So we are going for double glow today. See how that just pairs beautifully. The peach gasm, actually, hold on, let me, swatch both of these side by side. Oh, there you go. I was right. They are very similar. So right here you have the RMS blush and right here you have Peach Gasm. See how those complement each other so, so well, or you could use one or the other depending on your preferences. I should probably blend this out before it dries. Sorry, I'm very chatty guys. I'm excited about these products. The Charlotte Tilbury also, I will say, these Charlotte Tilbury highlighters also, I will say, they are incredibly long lasting. I've been swatching a lot of makeup up for all these different like favorites and roundup videos for the month of December and I was swatching those on my hand the other day and they come off with makeup remover and all that but if you just rinse them under the water or kind of gently wash your hands they don't move especially compared to other products so I know that there's a lot of more affordable dupes for these but honestly I just feel like these have much more longevity and one tube lasts me a long time so I would prefer to just go for the OG Charlotte. Charlotte Tilbury version. Before we get into the eyeshadows, I am going to quickly do my brows off camera. My favorite brow pencil is the Kosas Brow Pop in the shade Medium Brown. Unfortunately, if you recently saw my empties video, which I will link down below, I finished this up. So I am going to be going in with my second favorite, which is still very, very good. Okay. It is the Victoria Beckham Baby Blade. And I also use the shade, yes, Medium Brown in this one. It has the little pencil on one end. It has the little spoolie on the other. I love this one because it's incredibly precise. So especially if you want a little bit more of a natural look and you want to apply the product, you know, just where you need it. There's a couple of little, there's a couple of little sparse areas here and there. I like to use this to really crisp up the line. This is really good for that. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. 
Congratulations, congratulations friends, because you have made it to what is the most painful part of this video for me, choosing my favorite eyeshadow palette. And I feel like this is particularly tricky for me because I don't have just one eyeshadow aesthetic. I love soft washes of color, kind of neutral, natural, minimalist looks, but I also like more artistic, more pigmented formulations. I like glitter, I like duochrome, I like shine. I love makeup, I love eyeshadow and playing around with different looks just depending on my mood and the look that I want to create. So picking just one is very, very difficult. So I decided to pick two. I picked two, okay? I did limit myself, but I decided to pick two and I will explain. I looked at my palettes and I thought to myself, if I was, you know, pre-YouTube Sophia or even, you know, going back to myself when I first started buying eyeshadow palettes and they started becoming a popular makeup format, I tried to think about, you know, what would be the palettes that I would have gravitated towards that I would have been totally happy with if I didn't have any other palettes in my collection. The first one I'm gonna show you is gonna be the one we're gonna be using today. And if you have followed me for a while, this really shouldn't be that surprising. It is the Viseart Minx Set Palette. I love this. This is my favorite warm tone neutral palette. And you guys know, as I mentioned a couple of times in this video, warm tones is really my happy place. I love all colors. I love the cool tones as well, but these are the shades that kind of make me feel my prettiest, that make me feel beautiful, okay? So this is one of my favorite palettes. I love the Viseart formulation, the soft blendable mattes, the silky smooth shimmers, and this color story as well. It has some really pretty neutral everyday colors, but it also has some richer, bolder mattes and shimmers here for me to deepen up the look. And they're not just brown, like we have browns here, but you have a beautiful deep aubergine. You have some coppery and golden shades as well. It is such a lovely palette for literally any occasion. Asian. But friends, as I mentioned, I couldn't narrow it down to just one. I did pick two and I wanted to choose something that was a little bit lighter and brighter that had a couple more fun pops of color. This palette, hands down, is one of my most used and one of my most favorites in my collection. It's definitely in the top 10. It is my go-to summertime and vacation palette. It is the Viseart Soleil La Plage. I'll hold both of these up side by side. The Minx Et is great if I want something warmer, deeper, richer, sexy. Here. And then the Soleil La Plage, I feel like this is just the perfect complement because these shadows are brighter, more neutral. And like I said, you get some fun pops of color in here. And every time I wear this on my eyes, you guys are asking me what palette did I use? It looks so, so beautiful. Even these two yellow shades right here, they're a lot prettier and more interesting than you would think. They're a lot easier to work with than you would think. I'm going to link down below a tutorial that I filmed when I was in Miami in January of this year. If you guys want to see me use this palette and create a look. Highly recommend that you check out that video. Because I already filmed that tutorial this year, I decided we're probably due for a look with the mink set. So this is the one that we're going to be using today. I'm going to start off with the peachy shade right here. This is such a beautiful go-to transition shade for a very wearable look. We're not going to go too crazy today, but I'm going to try and use a couple of the shades to demonstrate for you. And this is the one that I tend to go for a little bit more so in the fall and winter. Although if I'm going out at night in the summer, I will go for this one over the Soleil La Plage because I just like the beautiful golds for that kind of like, you know, bronze golden goddess type of look. And one of my favorite shades in the palette is this one right here. It is the perfect complement to that peach that we just applied to the grease. It is a soft peachy shimmer. And if you've never tried the Viseart shadows before, they are one of my favorite formulations. Like I'm not even getting any fallout really when I tap off my brush. The shades are not dusty at all, but they also aren't overbearingly glittery. I feel like they look very smooth on the eye. They're not gonna be super soft like a Chanel palette. They're gonna be more bold and pigmented than Dior. But if you're like me and you kind of like an in-between, you like that sort of, you know, Goldilocks formulation, so to speak, then the Viseart one is a really great way. Then the Viseart is a really good one to try out. I'm gonna do kind of a brighter lower lash line. So I'm gonna go 
into this shimmering beige. It's just a standard, neutral, regular beige that you can use for any look. Not every shade in this palette is super warm. You can see these three shades right here. That can be like a basic mini palette, basically, that isn't super warm. So you do have a little bit of versatility there. And actually, I think I'm going to go into that lightest shade, which often I will use for blending. And I'm going to lay that down in the inner corner as a, I don't know, kind of like a matte inner corner, basically just a little bit of a base because my eyes do get red. And I feel like that almost camouflages any of the redness. Next, I'm going to go into this slightly darker neutral brown, and I'm going to blend that out into the inner corner. This is going to tone down the warmth of the look just a little bit. It's going to add a little bit of depth to the outer corner as well. Now I'm going to take a smaller, more precise crease brush, and I like to mix this deeper brown and this kind of reddish brown. It's a shimmer and a matte. I like to mix those, and I like to apply that out here to the outer corner. This is going to be, you know, not the most subtle look, but like I said, it's not going to be super smoky. I do have to head into the office pretty soon. So this is going to be like a, what is a daytime office look for me at least. It doesn't usually take me too long to create this entire makeup look if I'm not narrating to you guys about <laughs> my all-time favorites. To create a little bit of contrast, I'm going to go into the yellowish gold toned shade. This would be a really great one and done as well. I'm just dotting that in the center of the lid because I feel like this contrasts really well with the peaches that I already applied. And then lastly, I'm going to go into the deepest shade in the palette with a little liner brush. This one is the number 24 from Dior. And I'm just going to press that into the upper lash line and just kind of blend and smoke it out. I'm not going to create really like a precise line. I just want, you know, like a little bit of subtle definition there at the upper lash line. And then lastly, I'm going back into that lightest matte shade and I'm using that to blend all around. They are doing some very loud construction or leaf blowing or something outside. So I hope you guys can't hear that in the background. But if you can, I do apologize for that. It's kind of annoying as I'm trying to film my favorite video. Before we move on to eyeliner, friends, I did want to quickly share my favorite single eyeshadow. I felt like that was another category, right? Single eyeshadows count. And the one that I decided to choose is the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurks Eyeshadow in the shade Cressida. I'll swatch this for you guys here. It's a very basic Sophia shade. It is just a beautiful, bright champagne. This reminds me a lot of a single eyeshadow that I used to use all the time when I was like in my early 20s or I think even in college. I would use the Stila eyeshadow in the shade Kitten. Do you guys remember that? They probably still have it, but this formulation I feel like is just a lot better than the Stila liquid eyeshadows. This is just the perfect one and done for me. I only only have, ironically, one shade of the Liquid Lurks eyeshadows. I know, I need to try more, but I've used restraint, guys, okay? I really just wanted this one shade to start. I use it all the time. I still love all of my eyeshadow sticks. I still love my RMS eyelights. I love all of them, but this one shade just really, really does it for me. And you know what? I think we're going to use this as like a little inner corner highlight. Now that I have it here on the back of my hand, we did that matte base, and now I'm just going to pop that as an inner corner highlight. I mean, look how pretty that is. It's so good. And these have amazing longevity as well. So they're not going to budge if you put it, you know, around the inner corner right here. You don't have to worry about glitter and that kind of stuff falling in your eye because these aren't chunky at all. They're very, very smooth and easy to apply. So there we go. We are nearing the end here, friends. Are you still with me? Are you ready for my favorite eyeliner? My favorite eyeliner is definitely this one from Chanel. These are the Stilo Yo Waterproof Eyeliners. I've talked about them so many times here on my channel and I am slowly collecting all of the shades and my favorite shade that I use the most. It's very basic, I know, but it is called Bois Noir. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that okay. It is a gorgeous mix of brown and black. It's just a very dark brown, so it goes with so many different looks, especially these kinds of, you know, more neutral brownie types of shades and stuff that I like to use on the eyes. And I like this because it is very easy to work with. The tip is super bitty and precise. I don't have to sharpen it. So if you don't have time for that, don't worry, you don't need to sharpen these and they last so 
long. Like I just put this on my hand and like it does not budge. So this is what I'm gonna be using today. I already put on the shadow as kind of a liner just to demonstrate, but I am gonna go over it with the Bois Noir. And actually guys, I probably will wing this out just to kind of show you. You can create a very precise little wing. And then usually I'll just use my nail and I'll kind of like smudge it out like that. See how pretty and easy that is. Eyeliner is on and now it is time for mascara friends and my favorite mascara is the one from Kali Ray. This is the Thumb Hell or High Water Tubing Mascara. This really rekindled my love for tubing mascaras last year. I love the longevity that I get from these styles of mascaras and the Kali Ray is no exception. I like how long and fluttery it makes my lashes. I also really like the brush. I know this brush looks really simple but this is what I prefer. Something that is a little bit smaller, tapered, easy to get every lash. I don't like big and bushy mascara wands. I feel like I just make a mess. So with this, I feel like I can just very easily coat every single lash. And if I go in with a second coat, it really gives me a lot of volume. I feel like after as well. I also feel like after the first layer dries just a little bit, you can kind of go like this to add a little bit of length at the tips because with the tubing formula, it really kind of locks everything in place and it does not flake. I also have very sensitive sensitive eyes and I feel like this never irritates my eyes and it comes off very easily at the end of the day with just a little bit of warm water and then I'll kind of go in with my oil cleanser as well to get off the rest of my eye makeup. It is just a fantastic mascara. This is also my mom's favorite mascara. Oh and by the way this is totally a mini size. I'm trying to use this one up so this isn't the full size full disclaimer. You can get this in a bigger tube. I feel like it's time to take the hair down. Our look is almost complete complete, but I am going to finish things up, friends, with lips and fragrance. I'm not going to do a favorite in every type of lip category, favorite lip gloss, favorite lip balm, favorite lipstick, liquid lipstick. I'm not going to do that today. I just chose one lip product that I really like. It's one of the most beautiful lip products in my collection. It's my go-to, especially for signature looks like this one. It is the YSL Rouge Volupte Shine in the shade Orange Carousel. And I feel like when you say orange or like Sophia and orange, that's like your favorite everyday shade, but it's more of an orange nude. And when this color is combined with the natural rosy tone that is in my list, I feel like it looks so good and magical. You can wear it with this type of eyeshadow, but I also just wear it with a very simple look as well. And I feel like it adds such a beautiful punch of color to the lips without being too, too colorful. I don't need a mirror to put this on. It's basically a shiny lip balm, so it's so easy to whack on. And also guys, it does have my name engraved on the bullet because you can get these customized if you order them because you can get these customized if you order them from the YSL website. Highly recommend that for a gift this holiday season. So this is the one that I chose. I also really like to wear this lippy with the Soleil La Plage palette. That's kind of like my go-to. So I just picked one. Aren't you guys proud of me? This is Orange Carousel. Finally, friends, as promised, I thought it would be fun to end this video with my favorite fragrance. I have so many perfumes in my collection and this one has quickly risen to the top of one of my most worn fragrances. I think this one is my most worn fragrance of 2023. I picked it up, I think at the beginning of this year or the end of last year. It is the Tom Ford Soleil Neige Eau de Parfum. This is just something that I never get sick of. I love it in the warmer months. I love it in the colder months. It's kind of like that perfect in-between sophisticated scent for me. And this is a white floral based perfume, but it doesn't just smell like jasmine. Like there's a little bit more complexity there. And it's not so strong where I can't wear it to work. It's soft. It's sultry. It's delicious. I love it. I thought I would read the notes of this fragrance off of the internet for you guys. So the middle notes, like I said, are white flowers. You have orange blossom. You have jasmine. You also have rose and Turkish rose. All of these flowers I really like. But then at the base, you have things that are a little bit warmer and more sultry. So you have benzoin, you have vanilla, and you have labdomum. But then at the top, you have some really nice fresher notes to kind of open up the fragrance a little bit more, make it less heavy. So you have carrot seeds and you also have bergamot there at the top. It's a beautiful fragrance. Next time you're at Sephora or Saks or Neiman's or anything like that, give this a little smell because it's absolutely beautiful. Like I said, guys, I really never get sick of it. And actually I wasn't going to purchase this at first. I exchanged it for another perfume that I didn't really like. I smelled it in store and I was instantly hooked. So give it a little sniff next time you're in a department store, guys. It is such
such a beautiful perfume. Woo, that was a lot, but it was also super fun. So thank you friends for suggesting this video. This is the final look. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I really like how it came out, obviously, because I used all of my favorite products, but I would love to hear from all of you now. What are your holy grail products in every single category, or at least maybe what is your favorite eyeshadow palette? What is your favorite foundation and blush? I feel like those are the ones I get asked about the most. Comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.